Hello everyone, my name is Dorian and welcome to Lime Rock. We are with the Lamborghini Huracan GP3 Evo doing a track guide. So I'm just going to show you guys the lap real quick and then we're going to go over it corner by corner. If you enjoy it, leave a like and if you want to see more track guides and race videos, then subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments what you think as well. That's it. See you guys on the track. Okay, so we're coming up to turn number one. Let's look for a breaking point. It's going to be right before the two marker. So I would say the 2.3. That's when I start breaking. Now, uh, if you got a cold, ca cold car, slightly after the three, right around here, might be recommended to prevent the snap uh, oversteer or the understeer on the entry. So, um, breaking around 75%, pretty hard. Going to start to turn in right before the one marker. So right around here. And I'm releasing the brakes very quickly. I'm trying to carry the speed into the first apex, downshifting into first, into fourth, and hugging the curb a little bit, and then letting the car wash out and run a little wide. I'm staying in fourth for a little bit because that helps me kind of wash the car to the outside to get a better entry for the second apex. So I'm only going to downshift into third pretty late, right around here. So as you can see, the blip just occurred. That means I just downshifted into third. Uh, right towards the end of the curb, I would say, on the inside. And letting the car run wide, but I am using a lot of steering and a little bit of trail braking to put some weight on the front and rotate the car. So at this point, uh, I would say I'm, I'm to the left of the middle, but not all the way to the left, because there is no grip there. And I'm using the throttle to stabilize the car, maintain that mid-corner speed, not to scrub off too much speed, but I am uh, pretty, uh, pretty aggressive with my left here make sure the car rotates so i'm lifting all together letting the car go neutral hugging the curb on the end side as i can see the car is pointed towards it i'm using the throttle to kind of wash me away from it so i don't mount it i want to be very uh, early on the power here and i want the car to kind of put the power down well so i don't want to mount that curb on the end side it could toss you to the outside i i'm not using 100 uh, percent here because i i really am trying to prevent the understeer here I don't want to use all of the track. This is not a classic corner because from this point on, you're going to have to make compromises to make sure you can complete the next two or three corners as well as possible. So you have to make some compromises here. Don't let the car run too wide and immediately take it to the left here, staying in third gear throughout. Then the car go to the left and I'm initiating the turn in pretty much right around here. And as I do, I'm going to start breaking, looking for a breaking point. I don't know what this line is. It could be relevant. It could, it could be just a shadow, so it might move. But right around here, I'm going to start breaking around 25-30% and releasing into trail braking, staying in the middle or slightly towards the left of the middle of the track. There's no grip on the outside. You will snap the rear or just understeer into the grass. It's unrecoverable. So... Try to stay in the middle or even towards the left of the middle, kind of compromising your uh, maximum speed that you can carry here, but you're going to get more stability in return. And I'm going to downshift into second very late, so right here. And the reason for that is because, again, I'm trying to compromise the exit here to get a better line for the right-hander coming up. I want a very, very, very late apex here, so I'm going to ride the curb on the end side here and going to hug it the whole way through, already back on the power but i'm not flooring it yet just as i clear the curb straighten out the wheel flooring it as you can see the car is super straight right now i got it lined up to the left correctly and i'm going to start to initiate the turn in to the right um, so i'm using all of the track that's available to me i could have used a little bit more could have turned in a little bit later and i'll explain why in a sec so a little bit of a uh, uh, big lift actually so as soon as i put in third i started lifting 
all the way down. See a lot of modulation here. There's no on off here. I'm kind of using the steering, uh, the the throttle to steer me a little bit towards the apex, or you know, kind of wash me away from it if necessary. So I I lift it a little bit too much, so I mounted this curb. You don't really want to mount it. You do want to hug it as much as you can. Technically, you just want to put your right tires on this white line because that's going to give you the maximum amount of grip and the best exit possible. So because I mounted this curb, the car is kind of bouncing all over the place and it couldn't really put the power down as well. That cost me about half a tenth, maybe a tenth on the exit. So if you avoid clipping that curb too much, you will gain a lot of speed on the exit here. Every half a tenth or a tenth here on this track and such a short track really, really matters. Letting the car run wide. And we're through. Now, we're going to line the car up to the right, taking a nice short route, and diagonally to the left here, all the way up to 5th gear, and we're going to stay in 5th for this next corner, and we're going to do that uh, again on the final corner, because the 5th fifth, fifth gear here really prevents the understeer on the exit, which you really don't want, especially here and on the final corner. So I'm going to start braking, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to turn the car left so I can put two wheels on the curb here, maximizing my approach. And as I reach the curb, I'm going to start braking very softly, around 35% and immediately releasing it. Starting to turn in about halfway through the curb. And I'm looking to put the car on the inside here and mounting this curb nicely. And I'll show you what it does in a second. So I'm aiming towards it. Already back on the power at this point, even before I mount the curb, to maintain stability throughout it. Because you're carrying a lot of speed, and if you're trying to be neutral when you mount this curb, it could snap the rears. It could be doing weird stuff. So you really want to make sure you got plenty of throttle when you hit this curb. Around 50% and squeezing more and more out of it. Now initially, it's going to initiate some understeer, so it's going to wash me out. But at some point, as you can see, I'm, I'm smashing the throttle at this point. It's going to give me a lot of rotations. You can see it's kind of sticking me to the inside, and that's exactly what I want. And I'm staying flat from this point on. The car is washing out a little bit. That's fine. And I'm going to open up the wheel. As soon as the uphill section kind of straightens out, the car gets super light. You don't want to use a lot of steering input. But as I can see, the car is kind of flying in the air and going towards the left. I'm going to correct it again. Essentially, you want to keep a straight wheel throughout, but uh, I made a small correction because I know I'm going to have a lot of weight on the rears because I was flat out throughout, so it wasn't a problem. The car didn't snap. As I landed and the car kind of corrected itself, I straightened out the wheel again. About a third of the car on the grass here. If the wheel is straight, shouldn't be much of a problem, and there's no off track. Tiny bit more than that, half an inch, and you will get an off track. And the, the point where you do get an off track here is also the point where you lose a lot of grip and you can just snap into the wall on the right here. So you got to keep that in check. Essentially, you want to stay within the limits, but that was a, a last, uh, last second correction. Now, because we took that previous corner in fifth, we're going to use the downshift here to give us plenty of rotation. So the breaking point would be, if I remember correctly, the uh, right here where the line breaks off. So we're going to break right at it, right, as you can see, not a big peak, around 50%, an immediate release, downshifting just now into fourth, that gives us plenty of rotation, and in fact, what I'm going to do here is a technique I usually use in F3s, which is I'm going to aim towards the curb, but definitely, I don't want to mount this curb, this is the worst curb on the track, if you mount it, it's just going to kick you to the outside while you're bouncing, it's a terrible feeling, there's no way to go fast while mounting this curb, so... I'm aiming towards it, and as I can see I'm about to mount it, I'm going to floor it. And that's going to that's gonna give me some understeer and wash me away from it, so I don't mount it, but I get as close to it as I possibly can with the left wheels on the right side of the, uh, well, on the line, on the white line here on the right. Staying flat, the car will wash out, so you want to open up the wheel pretty early to make sure you prevent the understeer. And using the curb on the way out. Now, going downhill here, you want to upshift into fifth. 
and stay in fifth again to prevent the understeer now there's a ton of compression here as you can see it's very steep you're going downhill then straightens out altogether in a very short period of time and that's going to put a lot of weight on the rears and because of that it's very easy to get a lot of understeer here so to prevent that first of all we're using fifth and uh, the second thing is i'm gonna lift right before it straightens out you can see i'm already starting to lift lifting very aggressively all the way to zero and turn in the car before the compression happens so i don't have too much weight on the rears as i turn in the car and it will comply very nicely now again aiming towards mounting the curb and using the throttle to wash me away from it so i can put my right side of the car right on this white line that's where all the camber and all the rubber is it's gonna suck you in. it's gonna make your life a hell of a lot easier especially when drafting and staying flat the whole way through that's it that's gonna give us a one well it's not a one it's a 47 455 very short very sweet track and I'm, I'm gonna have fun here i'm probably gonna do a race if you guys enjoyed this track guide leave a like and subscribe to the channel let me know in the comments what you think and hop over to my discord as well i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye